What makes an artist want to create a series of work? If you've ever wondered that, you're in the right place. I'm Beverly Claridge. Welcome to my channel. Opening the door on my way out of the 8th grade guidance counselor's office, my eye caught a glint of light from the wire grid trapped inside the opaque glass. Why did Mrs. Kennard, who was supposed to help children, need glass like that? I felt equally entrapped by her pronouncement on my future. The entire class had labored all day, weeks ago, completely filling in, but not straying outside the oval answer bubbles on the test page using nothing but our number two graphite pencil. We selected our answers from a predetermined list that would dictate our future occupation. Well, not exactly dictate. Mine felt more like an indictment, once I knew what it meant. Civil servant? Servant. I certainly did not like that. Uncharacteristically, I mustered the courage to ask, oh, a mailman or postal worker? Or maybe work as a clerk or secretary in a government office? My stomach felt as if it had been punched hard. As a naive eighth grade girl, when women's liberation rallies were only just starting to fill headlines, I dreamt more for my life than day in, day out work, only to get old, decrepit, and then... I thought about my dad who spent many, many hours away from home doing a job he clearly did not like. I determined I would never be a civil servant. Never. Mrs. Kennard's prophecy over my future was the beginning of a larger, latent discovery. Time is the most precious gift I've been given. What I would choose to do with this gift was the most important decision I would make. The sense of eternity has been placed in the human heart, stirring a deep desire for meaning, of leaving a mark, to make some kind of transcendent contribution during this dash called life. When I look at vintage photos, I wonder what kinds of lives the people in them led. What were their hopes and dreams? Did they leave the legacy they desired? When I reignited my passion for creating art over 30 years ago, I also stirred up within myself a desire for transcendence. Could my art influence others? Sure, I wanted to be good at what I did, but would anything I created be relevant to those who lived on or who were born after I've done my dash? It was with these musings that I approached Bob Martin over at Art South in Gore with my thoughts and plans for ephemeral perception. I have observed that people treasure that which is rare or in short supply more masterpieces will undoubtedly be created, more breathtaking dwellings designed and built, more monuments, more factories, more music, more wealth, more knowledge will be accumulated. Time is the one thing we cannot make more of. We have no such control over it. Ephemeral perception explores human pursuit, and it asks, what have we done with this priceless treasure? My view of the collection, 10 years on, is arguably more refined. The fleeting or transient knowledge gained from the process of coming to know or trying to understand the passing of time. That is what ephemeral perception is to me now. Hubble spacecraft images of the universe beyond our planet were reimagined in these works to represent the idea of the eternal. Was time measurable in this backdrop? None of the clocks have hands. I wanted to reference works of the artist of my adopted homeland, New Zealand. Was my influence as an American artist working within a New Zealand context felt? Each work gives reference to Tongara Whenua, people of the land. Red threads suggest connectivity. Women represent wisdom. I like what Christopher P. Jones wrote in his April 2019 article on the problem with artists discussing their art. He writes, Talking about my art was never an easy thing to do. It still isn't. The point of creating art was to go where words couldn't venture. He continues, however, that most artists at some point must talk about their work. And that's the reason for this series. I invite you to the first tour of Pearl of Great Price next time.